Okay, and we're back, this time with the Highwayman review for the Darkest Dungeon. Uh, we are going to go over things like his stats, his skills, his camp skills, his resistances, his trinkets, his best team comps, and partners. So let's switch over to his stats. So here are the Highwayman stats uh, down here. Um, this time I decided to do something special and we pulled out the Hellion and Shieldbreaker as well. Um, I'll, I'll tell you why later, but basically the gist of this portion of the video is that we're going to compare Highwayman with the average stat line of the cast. Uh, Highwayman, of course, being directly extracted from this line right here. The average values being calculated from the rest of the cast. And we're going to decide from these stats and comparisons what the Highwayman is best at. Highwayman has just about average HP, uh, above average dodge, that's good, um, about, av about average speed, uh, crit rate above average, uh, one of the higher ones in the game, second highest in the game, tied with um, two other, uh, one other person, that would be the Hellion. Uh, he's got a slightly above average damage range, uh, 8 to 15 and a half is the average, while his is 9 to 16. He's got a just about average stun resist, just about average blight resist. Average disease resist, average move resist, average bleed resist, average debuff resist, and of one of the highest trap disarms in the game, tied with two other people for 100%. Uh, he's got four, two, back two. So you'll see um, right here, Highwayman is one of two characters in the game that do not have any red on their set and actually has some green on their set. Um, the other one being, of course, Hellion right here. Um, that is a very good stat line for the Highwayman. Um, being just about average at everything is okay. The resistances are all generally not too important besides bleed and blight resist and a little bit of stun resist. And being average in all of them is certainly not a bad thing. Um, being average in HP is good, uh, especially since he has above average dodge. And with those dot resists, he is overall a, a decently durable character. Uh, pretty respectable in that uh, regard. Uh, he also does have those that powerful crit number. And, of course, the powerful um, damage uh, range. Uh, the reason I have the Hellion and Shieldbreaker pulled up is I want to make a direct comparison between the Highwayman and the Hellion and Shieldbreaker. Uh, all three of these are considered some of the best damage dealers in the game. And you'll see, if you look really quickly across Hellion's set, she generally outclasses the Highwayman. And you'll see that uh, it's the same with the Shieldbreaker. She outclasses the Highwayman in most of, her, most of the important stats, except for, you know, for example, Bulk and a Blight Resist. Which overall, these two characters down here are just statistically um, better than the Highwayman. Um, and, oh, we, we forgot to talk about his movement. Uh, Highwayman works in any of the four positions, to be honest, so it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, he ideally doesn't like to be in position four or uh, position one for too long. He's got uh, abilities that uh, move him so this, this doesn't matter too much, except for the fact that you can help reposition your teammates. And, of course, you can. You've got two movement and two, two movement in both directions, and so you have a lot of flexibility in that regard. Um, but, yeah, overall, these two characters kind of outclass the Highwayman in terms of statistics, and we'll talk about why the devs have decided to balance it that way. Uh, Highwayman's crit buff, though, uh, he does crit pretty often at 9%, second highest in the game again, and his skills generally do have a pretty respectable crit rate, so he will be activating this crit buff pretty often, and it's a crit buff of plus 2 speed. Plus 2 speed is insane of a crit buff. Plus 2 speed itself is valued at roughly an uncommon trinket's worth of a buff. So, for one turn after you crit, you will get an uncommon trinket slapped onto your Highwayman for the next turn. And that's pretty good. Like, uh, two speed, especially for the Highwayman, who's at seven speed, which is the average speed, getting buffed to nine speed is very, very powerful. Being a, a medium speed character, being buffed to high speed is very, very good. This is an amazing crit buff. I really, really appreciate this crit buff. So those are stats. Let's move on to his skills. So we're here with the Highwayman's skills. Um, you'll see this is what I believe to be his optimal set. And we'll go through each of the skills. Um... Uh, one by one to see why. Just know that the devs have balanced out the Highwayman in regards to the Hellion and the Shieldbreaker uh, to kind of balance out the fact that Duelist Advance is very, very OP. And I'll explain to you why Duelist Advance is very, very OP when we get up to it. But we're going to start over here with Wicked Slice. Uh, Wicked Slice is a skill that is launchable from positions 1, 2, and 3 and can target the opponent's positions 1 and 2. Uh, this is... I mean, you're, you're targeting positions 1 and 2, which is not very exciting, 
uh, because you are not hitting the backline enemies, which are considered more important. But, I mean, he, he does have other skills for that. You know, for example, Duelist Advance and Pistol Shot both do that. So it would be nice to just have uh, the option of hitting positions 1 and 2. Uh, this has a, a, a lower accuracy base than I'd like. 105 is decently low. But it does come with a damage mod of plus 15%, which is really insane because not, not that many moves in this game have a, a positive damage mod. And Wicked Slice is one of them. Um, and that's very notable, and damage mod scales very nicely with crit and damage buffs because damage mods apply uh, additively uh, to the damage range before any crit buffs get applied multiplicatively. So what that means is, um, if you put like a, a damage buff on him uh, through skills or camp skills, what would happen first is you would get plus 15% uh, uh, a, mod a modifier of plus 15% on your damage range, which would bring 9 to 16 up to from 9 to 16 to 11 to about roughly 11 to uh, 18 or 19 um, somewhere around that area and then the damage buffs will apply multiplicatively to that 11 to 19 um, damage range that wicked slice granted you so um it scales really nicely with that and crit obviously would bring uh would bring you straight up to 19 and then multiply by 1.5 and that also scales very well with Wicked Slice. Wicked Slice is just capable of dealing a lot of damage, especially since it also has a crit mod of plus 9, which, when coupled with the Highwayman's 9% weapon base crit, uh, you get 18% crit, which means you're critting once, about once every 5 moves. 5.5 five moves, which is which is very, very good. This is a That's a very good crit ratio. That's, that's starting to become crit monster level. He crits pretty often, I would say, with this move. And that's really impressive. Because we can activate that plus two speed that I was talking about earlier, and that's very, very nice. Um, this is obviously very useful for uh, in the stalling phase of the fight, when you are trying to kill off one of the remaining two characters, and doing so would put you into the, st the real stalling phase of the fight, where you have just one character left. And this is very, very efficient at doing that. Very, very strong move. Obviously, it also works very well against size two enemies who are just, just have a lot more health. You can get them really low, really fast with Wicked Slice. His next move is Pistol Shot, uh, launchable from positions 2, 3, and 4, and hitting the enemy's positions 2, 3, and 4. Same accuracy as the Wicked Slice, and at 105, that's not very exciting. It has also a negative damage mod of 15, so it's the exact opposite of Wicked Slice. It'll do even less damage, and that would bring him to, what, roughly 7 to, like, 14 in terms of damage, uh, which is not very exciting because it is starting to bring him below average in terms of damage range. And, but it does come with a crit mod of plus 11.5%. Plus 11.5% on, on this crit base brings us to 20.5. This is critting more, uh, more than one-fifth of the time. More than one-fifth of the time you're using Pistol Shot, it will crit for you. That's insane. We can activate his plus two speed so consistently with this. And the, the utility of this move is that if you look at his other moves, they don't really... Well, but Tracking Shot's not really a, like a damaging move. But his other damaging moves, they don't hit rank 4. And Pistol Shot can hit rank 4. We can have access to rank 4 enemies with Pistol Shot. And this makes the Highwayman one of the best enemy, uh, one of the best heroes in the game to interact and kill rank 4 with. And this, this is a very strong thing to do. Because not many heroes can project this much damage into rank 4. And the only other one that comes to my mind right away is Hellion. And maybe a Houndmaster who gets his bleed off. Uh, and... Howmaster has to roll for that bleed. Pistol Shot doesn't have to roll for anything, and it has a high chance to crit. So this this move is very very good. It has it does fill a niche that a lot of other characters can't fill. I I think this move is invaluable on a Highwayman. This is definitely one of the staples. Um, you can you can think about Wicked Slice or not, but this is a staple. Don't don't ever get rid of this move. Point Blank Shot is his third move. We've got a uh, Point Blank Shot is only launchable from position one and only targets position one of the opponent's team. Um. So right away, that's not very exciting because you aren't killing those important backline characters. But this move does have applications. Let me explain uh, as we go through the move. Uh, but most importantly, it moves you back one. So you can't spam this move over and over again unless you have someone working with him to put him back into position one. Um, it does have a, the, a very strong accuracy mo uh, base at 115, the highest in the game for damaging moves. A plus 50% damage mod. Plus 50% is huge. This damage mod is insane in terms of just how much damage it adds to point blank shot. So let, let, let just doing quick math, 9 to 16, plus 50% on both no, those numbers gives you 14 to 24. You're doing 14 to 24 damage with this move. 
You're dealing literally leper levels of damage using point blank shot. On to position one. Leper is the best at doing damage to, to positions one and two. And Howie Man can match the leper. And not only match the leper, but he also gets plus 9% crit along with it. Which makes this move crit 18% of the time. The same as Wicked Slice. This is a very high crit move. Very high damage, very high crit. That's very, very powerful for something that is in position one. To, to kill something that is in position one. How often does that happen though? Not very often. You don't really want to kill position one that, that frequently. Um, because you will want to stall off of the enemy's front two positions sometimes. But the application for this, um, for this skill is in boss fights. Boss fights, they are generally race fights. You can't sustain being in a boss fight forever. Um, they will stress you out or they will deal extreme amounts of damage to you. And so one of the most consistent ways to take, to take care of bosses is to point blank shot them in the face. Um, and that has, that has, this, this skill is very, very good at rapidly killing bosses because unlike the leper it also has the ability to hit very frequently but this is this this like being having two highwaymen do this over and over again is very very powerful because you're getting two point blank shots every round off and you'll be killing enemies very rapidly so in boss fights i would recommend this move heavily this is a very strong move for boss fights um but in hallway fights i really do not recommend this move because it is actively doing what you don't want to do which is killing positions one and two uh, moving on, Grape Shot Blast is a, a, an AoE move that is launchable from positions 2 and 3 and targets positions 1, 2, and 3 of the opponent uh, at the same time. So we've got a accuracy base of 95. It's funny that we were just talking about the Leper and how good he is uh, at killing bosses uh, with point blank shot, uh, how man that is, um, because this, this move actually has the accuracy base of a Leper. 95 is the Leper's Chop. Leper's Chop has 95. 95 is the lowest accuracy in the game for a damaging move. And Grape Shot Blast has that accuracy as well. It shares it with Chop. So we're not going to be consistently hitting with this move most of the time. And it's a good thing we're targeting three different um, opponents because that means we have at least some chance, maybe, that we're going to hit one of these characters and deal some sort of damage. But minus 50% damage mod is very weak. Minus 50% makes him deal 5 to 8. 5 to 8 is very, very below average. And this does, and that means this shares the common problem with all AoEs in the game, in that you're not focusing damage. Focusing damage is too important in this game for me to be using Grape Shot Blast, which, first of all, doesn't hit as often, I can't hit reliably, and it doesn't deal damage enough that I care. And minus 5% crit mod really, really shatters this move, because you, you're going at 4% chance to crit. You're rolling 4% chance to crit on three different characters, um, three, three different enemies, but it's not, that's not very exciting. What is most exciting about this move is probably crit's receive chance, plus 8%. So uh, it's a debuff that you apply to the enemies, which make them more crit vulnerable for 8% for, for, three, for three rounds. But that's not, it's not very exciting when the Highwayman can, can output damage on his own and crit on his own to deal that damage. Yeah, Highwayman is not a utility unit, and um, I don't recommend this skill. It's just going to be nice to be able to finish someone off in these three ranks, while at the same time lightly tapping the other two ranks, but Highwaymen can do so much better than lightly tapping people. And if you're looking for a move to finish someone off in some of those ranks, Tracking Shot is what you're looking for, because Tracking Shot, which is a uh, launchable from all of your positions and targets, positions 2, 3, and 4 on the opponent's team, Tracking Shot is very good. And the reason it's very good is because it's a li it's limited to one use per battle, and it's a buffing move, it's a self-buffing move for the Highwayman, which means it is permanent for the rest of the fight. It's got 115 accuracy, which is a lot more consistent than Grape Shot Blast in terms of actually dealing damage. And it's got minus 80% damage mod, which means it does do less than Grape Shot Blast, yes. But um, it comes with these powerful uh, self buffs and also comes with de-stealth uh, and bypassing stealth, which is not that important in my opinion. I'm running this move because it gives him strong self buffs of plus 20% damage, plus 10 accuracy, and plus 8 crit. And this move is not, not going to be used very often in the race part of the fight, because you don't want to set up and then deal damage. You want to just deal damage, because the Highwayman is very good at just dealing damage stri straight from the baseline. Um, what, th what this move is strongest for is it's strongest for the stalling phase of the fight, preparing for the stalling phase of the fight. Because sometimes when you're stalling, you will want to actively take the reinforcements to the face in order to get more rounds um, in this fight, in this combat, you will want to get more rounds of, of healing and stress healing. Um, maybe to de-afflict a character that was afflicted, or to 
or to heal a character off of death's door um, and get him topped off, maybe. Uh, and so the highwayman, having tracking shot, will uh, and being able to use it uh, before before um, the reinforcements come, will make it so that he can project his damage and output even more damage and with a higher accuracy, very very consistently. So this move is has a, a huge application bonus, like has huge applications for setting up for taking reinforcements, and you can and should do that and should learn how to be comfortable doing that. Um, at some point in the game. Because being able to heal and stress heal fully with the Highwayman taking care of those um, reinforcements that do come is very, very good. Plus 20% damage. The, the Highwayman has a good damage base range already. Plus 20% damage is very, very powerful. That is that is a that is a legendary bracer. So that is a about a rare slash very rare trinkets worth of a buff alone. And then you got plus 10 accuracy, which is basically a focus ring, which is roughly a rare slash very rare bonus uh, on its own and then plus eight crit which is on which is one of the strongest crit buffs in the game as well so that's also roughly a rare trinkets worth of value so you're putting three rare trinkets on your highwayman using tracking shot so you, your highwayman essentially is holding five trinkets when he's going into a a reinforcement round he has five trinkets worth of power to, to be to, to try and take care of the reinforcements that's insane this move is so powerful and not only that it does have boss fighting value in that for longer boss fights for example off the top of my head i'm thinking of um darkest dungeon 4 and uh darkest dungeon 3 for example honestly all the darkest dungeons you can you leading with a tracking shot and then having these buffs is insane and then being able to repost or or even reposting first and then setting up a tracking shot after is also very very viable um it's just it's just crazy. This move has so many power and so much power packed into it um, that it's it's very worth considering. Uh, Duelist Advance is his. We finally got to Duelist Advance, which is his main skill, and it's launched over from positions two, three, and four, and targets the enemy's positions one, two, and three. Um, being able to position target uh, position being able to target position three is very very powerful. Um, being able to project damage to that rank is very good because those are the stress casters and you want to get rid of stress casters first. Uh, Duelist Advance moves you forward, uh, forward one, with an accuracy of 110. That's pretty respectable. You, it'll land pretty often with a damage mod of negative 20, which means it's even weaker than Pistol Shot in terms of projecting damage into positions, uh, position three specifically. And it can't even reach position four, so it looks like it's being outclassed by Pistol Shot already. Plus 9% crit. Uh, it does tie with Wicked Slice. Uh, that's pretty respectable. Um, it's good crit. Crits decently often. Um, but the most important part about this move is that it sets up something called Repost. And Repost is... Basically, what this Repost is, is when you get attacked, when you get targeted, not even attacked, when you get targeted for a move, when the Highwayman gets targeted for a move, after the move happens, he will counterattack. Uh, with... He will counterattack. And he'll counterattack with a move that does what these repost values say right here, which means the move will have minus 15% damage uh, of a damage mod, and it will have plus 5% crit instead of plus 9, which is on the, which is instead of the plus 9 that's on uh, repost, the dualist advance move. So this move, when he counterattacks, he'll have a minus 15% damage mod and plus 5% crit. The plus 5% crit brings him up to 14%, critting once every roughly 7 times with the counterattack is okay, that's whatever. Uh, it's it's decently respectably high for a counterattack, and the the damage mod stuff is a little sad. But what's important about this move is that it allows you to take actions. It allows you to make attacks in the middle of your opponent's turn. So when the opponent decides it's a good idea to attack the Highwayman with her post up, you will get a free action. A, f a, a whole free action's worth of damage to put into that opponent every time you get targeted. That's insane. He is getting so much value out of this move in terms of action economy. You're getting free actions. Let me say it again. You're getting free actions. Free is good. Free actions is very, very good. And not to mention, you can... Uh, the, the, the one special thing about Duelist Advance, which makes it even stronger, or Repost rather, not Duelist Advance, but Repost, something that makes it even stronger, is that when a stress caster attempts to stress cast you with Repost up, and you counterattack and kill the stress caster, you will not take stress damage. You will not take stress damage on the Highwayman. And that's very, very, very good. Um, 
But it, uh, obviously, all crits that do happen on the Howie Man will cause stress damage because crits are not a secondary effect. They are a totally different mechanic. Um, this works the same for bleeds and blights. So any dots that are attempted or that are attempting to be applied on the Howie Man, if those ca uh, those enemies are killed with the counterattack from Repost, they will not be applying onto you. They won't even roll. Those dots won't even roll to apply on the Howie Man. And this makes the Howie Man very very self sufficient. Because you want him to get a hit by stress attacks with repost in the end game, because you will often repost and kill those stress casters, and by doing that, the Howie Man not only saves stress from the rest of your team, but he saves stress on himself, which means he's pretty self-sufficient in terms of stress. So he takes care of himself with, in that regard. And not only that, because you're taking so many actions in the middle of the enemy's turns with a decent crit rate, if you give him some crit trinkets or some crit quirks, he will crit on the counterattack, and that will stress heal him. And obviously, lethaling your opponents will also stress heal him. So he's very good at keeping his own stress very low with Duelist Advance and this repost mechanic. And he's also, since he's critting, he's also good at keeping stress kind of semi-managed on the rest of your team. So Duelist Advance gives him a very strong stress healing component. He becomes kind of a mini stress healer with his skill and repost. So this, this skill has so many just little small mechanics packed into it that make it so powerful uh, altogether as one package that this skill is what they they balanced him around. Um, his stats are so low because uh, compared to the other like respectable damage dealers because the skill just gets him so many actions in the middle of the enemy's turn. This is insane. This is a staple. If you're not running this move, you need to be running other characters because this move carries the Highwayman Man alone in terms of how much power it packs. So let's move on to Open Vein, another also very good skill. Um, but let's let's talk about it, right? So it's a it's a it's a move that's launched over positions one, two, and three, and it it it, it hits the opponents one positions one and two. So if you remember real quick, uh, just comparing it real quick to Wicked Slice, this does the exact same targeting as Wicked Slice. So we have to do a direct comparison between Wicked Slice and Open Vein to determine which is generally better. Um, to see which one we should run. You can see that I've chosen Wicked Slice, but there are reasons to choose Open Vein, and I'm going to outline them. Uh, the Accuracy 115 is very good. It makes it more consistent to hit than Wicked Slice. The Damage Mod of negative 15, though, is 30% less than Wicked Slice, which has a positive 15, so it does less upfront physical damage um, to the, the enemies in question. It's got a lower crit mod by quite a bit. Plus 4% is very, very sad compared to plus 9%. Plus 4% makes this crit 13% of the time, which is not very consistent. You're critting just a little, uh, like, around, what, one out of seven and a half times. You will be critting with Open Vein. Not very exciting. It does bleed, though. And this this gives the Highwayman a dot portion, uh, uh, the ability to dot the enemies. It bleeds for 4 by 3 which is a moderate dot. It's respectable. Um, and it bleeds for 140%, which is very consistent, and it, de it, it puts debuffs on the target. The debuffs it will attempt to put on the target is minus 33% bleed resist, uh, which makes all future open veins more likely to uh, connect with their dot, and minus 3 speed. Minus 3 speed is actually very good, but um, it is being put into positions 1 and 2 on the opponent's team, which tend to be the slower characters, the, the slower enemies anyway. So minus 3 speed is not as impactful as you might think, but it does give you more opportunities to outspeed these guys with your stunners so that you can stun them during the sawing phases. Uh, if there's a ghoul, um, with who, if there's a ghoul uh, in positions 1 and 2, you will, uh, you will find this move very strong. Uh, Ghouls being a generic enemy, uh, you'll find them everywhere. You'll find this move very strong for the ghoul because the ghoul has a ton of protection, so you want to bleed him out. And also the ghoul is decently fast and has a lot of HP, so you do want to apply things like minus 3 speed to him. The reason I find this skill just generally uh, worse than Wicked Slice, though, is because I do have to roll for the bleed to apply in order to get damage out of this move. And uh, you can do some quick math, but I believe they equal out roughly um, in terms of damage if the bleed does apply. Um, and Wicked Slice, therefore, has the upper hand to me because it does give plus 9 crit. But Open Vein, definitely in the Warrens, would be very good because the Warrens is very susceptible to bleed. And honestly, you can choose between these two moves. I wouldn't really... I, I have run this set pretty often and been very happy with it. I've not even bought Wicked Slice sometimes. They work the same, honestly. But I would highly recommend to never run them both together because they basically do work the same. And so if you run them together, you're just wasting a... a a bar, a slot on your bar. Um, this is a move I, the move set I would run, uh, recommend running. Um, obviously, if you don't like tracking shot for some reason, you can click off tracking shot and click point blank shot instead. That's fine. Um, but never click off duelist advance. 
and never click off pistol shot. They are staples on his set. Let's move on to his camp skills. Gallows Humor. This is the same one as the Grave Robber one. It heals. It time. It's a time cost of four, and it heals the Highwayman for 25 stress, 25% chance to heal 20 stress, or a 25% chance to heal to to deal 10 stress damage to the other companions. Um, for each of the companions, it will roll uh, for this chance individually. So this is a very, very, very powerful stress healing skill. Um, the expected value of this skill, if you do all the math, comes out to roughly 62 and a half stress healed across your party, and that is very good. That is a very, very efficient stress heal um, for four costs. The Crusader, who has a similarly powerful stress heal, costs five. So this, at a cost of four, um, is very, very powerful and notable for that reason. Um, it does have the downside of not of you not being able to control who gets the stress heal and who gets the stress damage, but the overall expected value of this move is very, very strong, and you should be clicking it uh, when someone is stressed because you should expect to heal them. 75% chance is pretty good. Unparalleled Finesse is a time cost of 4. Um, we've got a buff move for the Highwayman only. It's a self-buff of plus 10 dodge, plus 2 speed, plus 20% melee damage, and plus 10 accuracy on your melee skills. So, what does this do? It buffs Duelist Advance by a whole bunch. Not only are you faster in order to get Duelist Advance off quicker, you also dodge more of the times that you get targeted. You deal more damage on your melee skill. Oh, by the way, the, the repost here, the counterattack is counted as a melee skill. So you're you're not only bonus you're not only giving a bonus to your duelist advance usage, but you're also giving a bonus to the repost, the counterattack. So 20% damage is insane for that. And you're giving plus 10 accuracy to the repost of duelist advance, as well as the repo, uh, as well as duelist advance itself, as well as any of these other moves. Uh, well, not pistol shot, because it's the only ranged move that we're running. Oh, and not tracking shot. These are the two ranged moves that we're running. Uh, optimally um so this move buffs his most important one of his his most important skill this is his most important skill it buffs his most important skill and it buffs it by a lot this skill is insane this is a crazy crazy powerful camp skill it turns the highwayman from a very good damage dealer into a very damn good damage dealer that's a very good good skill i click this very often this is a very very powerful camp skill to click clean guns on the other hand is basically uh, the same thing as... Oh, well, it's not the same thing. Let's go through it. Uh, it's it's a time cost of 4, and it gives plus 10 accuracy, plus 20% damage to ranged skills, and plus 8% crit um, to ranged skills. The ranged skills in his set are these three in the middle right here. We've got Pistol Shot, Point Blank Shot, and Grape Shot Blast. Grape Shot Blast don't run. Point Blank Shot and Pistol Shot benefit a lot from this move because it gives... it give, Oh, my bad. This move. This skill. Uh, because it gives them more crit, and it makes them crit more consistently. That's great. Plus 20% plus damage. On, on Point Blank Shot, which already has a damage mod on it, which scales very good with damage buffs. Sign me up. 10% accu 10 accuracy on these moves. Uh, Pistol Shot will want it more, but obviously if you give me more accuracy on Point Blank Shot, I won't complain. Very happy with this as well. But And this does have a lot of applications uh, for Point Blank Shot spamming only, in my opinion. Um, and that's because if you're not Point Blank Shot spamming, you're only using it to buff Pistol Shot. Uh, why buff Pistol Shot when you're, you can buff duelist advance instead uh it this move directly competes with unparalleled finesse and it often very often to me loses so this is uh this is an exciting move uh, this is an exciting skill and you can range uh, run a more range oriented highwayman but i wouldn't recommend it personally bandit sense is a prevent nighttime ambush move with a camp uh, camp skill cost of four uh it prevents nighttime ambush and it increases the chance that monsters will be surprised and decreases the chance that you will be surprised this is a very good camp skill for preventing ambush. This is the one of the strongest. I believe this is this is the strongest buff that you can receive from a camp skill that prevents nighttime ambush. The surprise stuff. Um, you don't like being surprised, and you would really love it if you surprise enemies. So, this skill does good stuff there. Um, the of note of particular note though is that I think the skill is not as good on the Highwayman as it is on the Howlmaster. It is the exact same on the Howlmaster um, because that Highwayman can buff his his out damage output very easily uh, versus the Hound Master. And so um, when you buff, you don't really care about ambushes. You will probably kill those ambushes very efficiently. Um, so this move has less value on a Highwayman than it does on a Hound Master, but it's still pretty good. And if you have four camp points lying around, why not, right? Yeah, so those are his skills. All right, so here are the Highwayman's trinkets. Um, of special note, I do want to talk about is Starwart Buckle. This is a very strong common to pick up in the early game. It's not very uh, runnable in the late game, but 
the main reason it's very good is because plus 5% crit. Plus 5% crit for a common is insane. This is very, very good. You fi you'll find yourself running this in the mid game pretty often. Plus 5% crit is no joke. And because the Highwayman already has such high crit, um, you will want this crit to make it more consistent. Um, these don't matter too much. Of course, uh, like I said, the Highwayman can manage his own stress with duels advance, repost killing, and critting. And so the Virtue Chance subtraction of minus 3, which is barely relevant anyway, is not that big of a deal. Very strong trinket for a common. But uh, let's move on to his rares and very rares. Sharpening Sheath. Um, plus 7% chance on to crit on your melee skills, plus 40% bleed skill chance, and minus 1 speed. Does give plus 7 crit to your melee skills, which is the most important part about it, um, because you will be buffing your uh, duelist advance and repost. And that's all you really need to do with the Highwayman. Buff his duelist advance and repost, and you should be having a good time. Sharpening Sheath is very powerful um, for that reason. Uh, but in the late game, it does get outclassed by a lot of other trinkets. For example, right away, right off the top of my head, Surgical Gloves. Surgical Gloves has plus 8% crit on your melee skills and also gives plus 5 accuracy. Uh, things that the Highwayman Man would really like. And so it directly gets outclassed by the Surgical Gloves in the late game. Uh, actually, not even the late game, because sur Surgical Gloves, if you look here, is uncommon. So you actually very rapidly uh, outclass Sharpening Sheath. Uh, not to mention, Sharpening Sheath also gives you minus one speed, which is very bad for the Highwayman. man. You don't want to go slower with the Highwayman. man. You don't want to, you want to set up his repost as quickly as possible. So you will not be running this in late game. And it is very weak compared to uh, even honestly Star Wars Buckle. Because Star Wars Buckle also gives crit to not only point blank shot but pistol shot, which is the uh, you know our, our range move. So this is this is getting like there's direct competition with this in terms of Star Wars Buckle versus Sharpening Sheet. With Star Wars Buckle obviously doesn't give minus speed. So honestly generally I would say Star Wars Buckle is better. Gunslinger's Buckle, this is very rare. It gives plus 20% damage to range skills, plus 15 accuracy to range skills, minus 10% damage to the melee skills, and minus 5 crits to the melee skills. So, if you're just running a normal Highwayman that, that's not geared toward boss fighting and using point blank shot, this trinket is horrible. Do not run this trinket. Because you are only buffing pistol shot for 20% damage and 15 accuracy. Nerfing duels advance here. Don't nerf duels advance. This is a very bad way to, to, to project damage with the high man. Do not nerf his best skill. Just to buff his second best skill. Don't do this. Bad, very bad trinket. Do not run this. So what trinkets do I recommend running on the Howie Man in the late game? Um I did forget to mention something about Repost earlier. Repost has a base accuracy of 85 and a crit chance, uh crit mod of plus five, yeah. Um so it has a base accuracy of 85% is what we have to see here. And that's not very accurate, obviously. Um so Buffing accuracy, that's not very accurate. So buffing accuracy on the Highwayman is a good thing. Um, so things like Focus Ring, Surgical Gloves uh, is a very good uh, trinket for the Highwayman. Um, things like the Ancestor's Pen, I would recommend. I believe Ancestor's Pen kind of belongs on the Highwayman, specifically. Um, because he is the best damage dealer in the game, with being able to take actions in the middle of the opponent's turn. I believe Ancestor's Pen, which is the best trinket for buffing melee skills. Ancestor's Pen, where is it? Ancestor's Pen. For buffing melee damage skills is most impactful on the Highwayman. 10% damage on melee skills, that's minor. But 8% crit on melee skills is insane. We can really, really crit really consistently with the uh, repost with this. And not only repost, but also Duelist Advance itself. Good good trinket on him. Um... Other good trinkets on him. Just stick any damage dealing trinkets on him. So that will be, again, Ancestor's Candle. Also gives him speed. That's very good. Plus damage is very good. Dodge is very good for the Highwayman because he could dodge when he's getting targeted for the repost. Um, things like the Crescendo Box, which gives plus two speed and plus some damage, is also very notable for the Highwayman. Just put damage trinkets on him. Anything that boosts... Get anything on the Highwayman that boosts crit, damage, accuracy, and speed. Those are the four things you need to buff on him. And if you can buff any of those, he'll be strong. So here we are with the team comps and partners for the Highwayman. When you move forward with Duelist Advance, you want to be in one of the first two positions. Because those are the positions that get targeted the most. Um, because the damage dealers on the enemy's team will focus on those two ranks. And the stress casters have the opportunity to focus on those two ranks as well. So you'll get the most value out of Duelist Advance if you start in position 3 or if you start in position 2. 2 and 3 are where he functions best. Um, ideally, he should be in position three and uh, move forward with move forward like that, so that he still has access to all of his skills. 
Uh, he does have access to all of his skills in position two. He has pistol shot. That's most important to have access to. So I recommend he starts in three and moves into two. So I recommend a character that works very well, uh, a character that works very well with him is a character that can function in positions two and three. And what comes to mind right away is actually the Abomination. Uh, he's also a stunner, and uh, he does give that stun support to the Highwayman. Uh, so that's that's a good one. Other another good one is obviously the bounty hunter. Same same concept works in position three and two at the same time. Another good one is Houndmaster does that. Um, and another one is actually Crusader who actually forms a lance dance comp with him where they both move back and forward, backward and forward with um, their forward moving moves. Uh, um, and yes, we leave the highwayman in position three. Uh, at some point, but the Crusader is actually very, very good for being the slowest character in the game in this scenario. If the Highwayman can move forward, he'll spend most of the turn um, in position two to be hit by the enemy, and then the Crusader will come at the end um, of the turn and put him back into position three where he's safer. If he took a lot of damage while getting hit and counterattacking with Repost, you can now hide him in this little safe hole and have the Crusader tank the hits instead. And you can decide to not move him forward anymore and pistol shot and the Crusader can start stress healing. Yada yada. You'll do a lot of damage with this comp too. So you'll probably enter the healing phase of the fight, uh, the recovery phase of the fight really rapidly. Um, but let's build a comp. Let's actually build a comp. Um, so let's have him start in position three. Um, obviously, we can do the Crusader. Uh, you, we could do a, another slow um, dancer like the Man at Arms and be pretty happy. Uh, let's do the Man at Arms though uh, because Man at Arms has a stun on his forward moving move. Uh, we should definitely put a healer on the team because the Highwayman, like, he does all the damage that you will ever need, so you just want to keep him alive. This is a very good, Vestal's very good partner with him, and we just need a rank 1 character. So what are we missing here? We have stuns, we have damage. Uh, what are we, we're just missing more damage because we do have that, uh, all of the stuff that we already need. Uh, we can go with a shield breaker in position 1, we could go with a Hellion position 1. Um, we could, of course, go with a bounty hunter for even more stuns. This is nice, too. Uh, but we can do this other thing where we can shift these guys forward. And now you see that doing this has the same power, uh, has the same access to moves. And maybe you can even start to run, um, well, yeah, you could even, yeah, you could start to run a position three character instead. So you can start to run characters that work well in position three only would be a, for example, Jester. You can run Arbalist here, um, to actually get off a Mark Synergy with Pistol Shot. If you really wanted to, I wouldn't recommend that. That's very niche. Um, it's not a very strong thing to be doing. You can also have the Bounty Hunter start back here if you're, you're afraid of the Bounty Hunter um, being too frail. Um, maybe Quirks are messing him up or you're putting trinkets on him that decreases health and dodge. Uh, you put the PD back here for insane, insane utility. Now you have three stunners and three very, very good stuns being thrown out. Um, but because you have good stunners here, you can actually switch out the, uh, uh, the Man-at-Arms here for a stronger damage dealer. For example, the Shield Breaker. And now we get it to this comp idea where we have Shieldbreaker plus um, Highwayman, which are some of the best... She's actually probably the best partner for the Highwayman, mainly because she has a strong, powerful damaging move in Adder's Kiss, uh, which moves her back. And when she moves back, because she's faster than the Highwayman... Uh, well, she's, yeah, she's faster than the Highwayman generally. Where did she go? She's faster than the Highwayman generally. So when she moves back, she pushes the Highwayman back into up into position one. And what that allows him to do is that allows him to use point-blank shot from position one, which then pushes her back. Why are these guys disappearing? Which then pushes her, which then pushes her back into position one, where she can Adder's Kiss next turn, or Impale. Uh, Impale also moves her back one. So, the ability for um, and also if you want to set up Duelist Advance instead, you can instead of um doing that, you can do Pierce and then have him do Duelist Advance, and then you could do a Pierce plus Duelist Advance dance in the front instead. But you can do a lot of things with this where point blank shot actually is usable and relevant. Uh, so I might recommend a set looking like this, kind of, uh, in this comp. But, yeah, you can output a lot of damage like that. So overall, what is my rating of the Highwayman? What do I tier him? He's got pretty good stats across the board. They are directly outclassed by other damage dealers like the Hellion and the Shieldbreaker, um, which is very notably sad, but... Um, he does make up for that in terms of his damage output being very, very different from theirs. And because it's very different uh, in repost and counterattacking, he can get access off in the middle of the opponent's turn, which is very strong. You'll crit out very often. He'll heal himself for stress. He'll heal the team for stress. Um, therefore, he's a damage dealer. That also comes with stress healing. Um, he will also cancel out a lot of secondary effects if he can get the kill with uh, the repost counterattack. He's got 
a lot of flexibility in team comps. You saw we moved him from from position three to position two, and we got access to a lot more team comps. We have uh, a lot of runnable skills on him. Honestly, six of these skills are runnable. He does a lot of damage. He's the best damage dealer in the game because of repost. Uh, if you just calculate the numbers, what being able to get off a damage, uh, being able to get off the damage of duels advance, as well as at least one repost, you'll see that it outclasses a lot of other units in the game already. And when you, we consider the utility of killing. That's even better. So, based on all that criteria, I actually rank Highwayman as a lower S tier unit. And the reason he's a lower S tier unit is because... Uh, that's amazing. He's a great unit. And But the reason he's a lower S tier unit is that his job, although he is the best at his job, there are a lot of people who are who are good substitutes. Like the Shieldbreaker is a good substitute. The Hellion is a good substitute uh, with Omni Rage and powerful... Well, these both have Omni Range, just like the Highwayman, and they have very, very strong um, uh, damage outputs as well. One more thing about Repost. Uh, the main problem with Repost um, is that it lasts for the next three rounds. And the Hellion and the Shieldbreaker don't have that component. Like, their, their, their damage... Their ability to damage doesn't last through rounds like the Highwayman's does. And the that is a problem in the recovery phase of the fight, where when your Highwayman is targeted by the enemy, um, the last enemy standing, and they kill themselves on your Highwayman, and it ends your a recovery phase preemptively. And I just want you to be very careful with that, because it could mess up your recovery phase and cut it short, and therefore you could enter the next fight in a very, very bad shape. And that is a problem that puts the that actually being too good at killing enemies does move the highwayman from upper s tier to lower s tier because you do want to control that aspect of the fight you want to control the recovery phase of the fight and repost doesn't let you do that quite effectively but other than that this is the end of the highwayman review i was very happy to talk about one of the best characters in the game one of my favorites as well um thank you for watching